What is a fantasy bond? The fantasy bond is not the kind of healthy bonding that takes place between two people, for example, the attuned connection between a mother and a child. The fantasy bond is not the bond of friendship that is personified by loyalty, devotion, and genuine love. The fantasy bond is different from the closeness of a romantic relationship that is characterized by affection, intimacy, sexuality, companionship, and respectful treatment. The fantasy bond is a psychological defense, which is largely unconscious, that we develop to cope with interpersonal pain and existential uncertainties. It is an illusion of being fused with another person that offers us relief from the fear and anxiety of being alone, abandoned, rejected, unloved, and ultimately of dying. Even though the fantasy bond offers some relief, it tends to lead to an inward self-protective style of living. A person develops a false sense of pseudo-independence. I don't need anyone. I can take care of myself. The more a person denies their needs and wants from other people, the more they operate as a complete self-sufficient system, and the more they seek satisfaction in fantasy rather than the real world. They avoid genuine friendship and a love relationship in favor of the illusion and false sense of security of the fantasy bond. In fact, anxiety is aroused when the fantasy bond is threatened, which is why we unconsciously defend it against people or events that may threaten it. The fantasy bond is formed in early childhood. The fantasy bond is unconscious because it is initially formed early in life when an infant develops an imaginary connection with a parent or primary caregiver. This offers relief from emotional distress. Sadly, human beings are born into an inherently flawed situation. They are totally reliant on their parents for physical and emotional survival over a prolonged period of time. However, there is no such thing as a perfect parent. Parents are people with their own lives and their own problems and even their own very human limitations. Therefore, it is not possible, even under the best circumstances with the most sensitive parents, for all of a child's needs to be fully met at all times. As a result, the infant attempts to cope with this deficiency by using its imagination to create an internal image of being fused with their parent. This imagined connection, together with self-soothing behaviors, acts as a self-parenting process that leads to an illusory feeling of safety and self-sufficiency. When children become older and first learn about death, their illusions of omnipotence and their sense of permanence is demolished. They realize that everyone, including their parents and finally themselves, will someday die. From this point, the fantasy bond serves as an unconscious defense to ward off death anxiety. The negative effect of the fantasy bond. There is a downside to the fantasy bond. In order for the fantasy bond to work and relieve a child's fear and anxiety, the child has to maintain an idealized image of a parent and see the parent as loving and nurturing and invincible. Were the child to recognize the actual shortcomings in their parents, the fantasy bond and its imagined safety and security would be threatened and potentially destroyed. If children were to see their parents realistically and find them to be lacking or even terrifying, they would experience their situation as unsafe and threatening. One of the ways for the child to deal with this dilemma is to blame themselves and to see their parent as innocent. Why is daddy yelling at me? It can't be because he is angry and out of control. It must be because I'm bad. Why is mommy not comforting me when I'm crying? It can't be because she's distracted or ignoring me. It must be because I'm unlovable. In other words, their parents can't be wrong, so their parents must be right. As a result, children accept whatever negative views and attitudes their parents have toward them as being reality and actually take them on as part of their identity. Daddy calls me a lazy good-for-nothing. That means I'm lazy and selfish. Mommy is irritable towards me. That means I'm difficult and demanding. 
These adverse attitudes and feelings form a negative self-image that stands in contrast to the positive self-regard a person may have. The Critical Inner Voice Challenging the fantasy bond is tricky. For one thing, it's a defense we're hardly conscious of. However, by paying attention to the critical inner voices and the self-defeating behaviors they are encouraging, we can become aware of the fantasy bond and how to challenge it. The critical inner voice expresses the views of the negative self-concept. It is, in effect, the language of our defense system. These inner voices range from minor criticisms like, I'm shy, I'm awkward with people, to major attacks like, I'm unpopular, people don't like me. It's helpful to conceive of the voice as an inner coach talking to you in the third person. You're bad. You're unlovable. You're lazy and selfish. You're difficult and demanding. You're shy. You're awkward with people. You're unpopular. People don't like you. This conceptualization enables you to distinguish the critical inner voice from a more realistic and compassionate regard for yourself. For example, these attacks aren't true. I'm a normal person. I'm not perfect, but I'm not bad or unlovable. Challenging the fantasy bond. The fantasy bond keeps us tied up in a self-hating, self-protective state. However, challenging the fantasy bond is not simple. It is not a quick fix, but rather it is an ongoing process. Changing a defense that served you well in childhood arouses anxiety, even though it is no longer necessary in your adult life. The first step in challenging the fantasy bond is identifying the critical inner voices that support the fantasy bond. You can become aware of the self-hating voices that make you think that people don't like you. You're not like other people. There's something wrong with you. You can recognize voices that encourage withdrawing from others and remaining in an inward state. You don't need anyone. You're better off on your own. You can realize the voices that are warning you and making you distrustful of others. Stay away from her. She's going to hurt you. You can counter these critical inner voices with a more accurate and compassionate view of yourself. You can disagree with your self-attacking voices. For example, I have some insecurities, but that's okay. No one's perfect. Everyone has issues they struggle with. You can confront the voices that are causing you to reject help and friendship from others. Like, I value friendship. I like having friends. You can challenge the voices that are making you self-protective and wary of romantic relationships. For example, I want to be vulnerable and open to love. I like having love in my life. Once you've identified and countered these voices, you can take action to change the behaviors they are prompting. For example, you can reach out to a friend. Or you can pursue someone you're interested in romantically. You can interrupt the inward self-defeating orientation of the fantasy bond by actively accepting love and kindness from others and by offering it to them. As you become more compassionate toward yourself and more vulnerable to others, the fantasy bond will no longer have the same hold over your life.